Hey, hey, welcome back to Don't Run With Scissors. I'm Kelly, your favorite Jeep driving lawyer, mom of twins, four crazy rescue dogs, a rescue cat, and rescue guinea pig, who likes to craft in her spare time, has gone back to school to learn sign language, and is trying to train for Iron Man. So if you're new here, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. It sends me a message to boost my serotonin and my self-esteem, and I could really use that. And if you're returning, you already know the crazy you're in for, so grab your drink, sit on back, and let's have at it. Um, so we are feeling physically better. Um, I am using the inhalers a lot less. I am, my stamina still isn't quite there if I'm doing like long walks, but I'll take it. Um, I went to the doctor. Um, I have to go in like every three-ish months for an A1C doc and whatnot um, and follow up um so my a1c is still high caveat it is the same as it was five months ago the last time we checked it the problem is is that your a1c measures it's an average of your blood sugar over the last three months mine is high i have always been taught that things like steroids being sick, being stressed will also raise your A1C. My endocrinologist has stated this. It's not like I'm just pulling this out of thin air or something I read online or, or whatever. Like, I legitimately know that I have been told this right. So I have spent, out of the last three months, at least two months of that sick. I did three rounds of clindamycin. I was still fighting an infection. When I went in and had my blood drawn, um, yay for meds and all of that that they cause for us girls. Um, and then, so I had done, what, nine days on prednisone, three different inhalers, a box and a half of albuterol for the nebulizer. I mean, like, could we be any more sick? And we already know, like, between with everything else and all the stress that I have been under and I'm constantly under. So it's not like, I don't know. I think at some point my body is just going to get used to all of the stress and be like, it's just normal Kelly. But, um, it, it's been crazy. So it's still, it's the same as it was. And when I, I asked about that and then I've been also taking B12 trying to raise my immunity and my energy. And I've been on a B12 over the counter supplement for well over a month now, my B12 is barely in the normal range, and my blood sugar is the same as it was five months ago, which is high. So he wants to add more meds. He doesn't want to do anything with B12. He's like, obviously the supplement's working. Um, clearly it's not. We're not at the level that it should be. And he's also said that steroids and being sick doesn't really impact your A1C. So needless to say, I've reached out to the endocrinologist. The other thing is, is he said that all of this, which I don't know that you could, you can't, I don't know how to adjust this camera on this computer um, so that it's not blowing out. But um, I apparently have, in my old age, developed rosacea. And um, he's like, I don't understand why Dr. Blas didn't give you a cream or something and I said she told me to use a vino he's like oh my god um but that medicine the first medicine that they would give me um includes flagell I am anaphylactic when I get flagell um at least oral pills I don't know about a cream because I've only taken the oral pills he's like yeah we probably don't want to take a chance so now we're waiting on the prior auth from the insurance company to hopefully cover that and some other things like literally he wrote two prescriptions and both of them need a prior authorization to be the good news is my insurance is back i had a glitch there was a glitch in the system and paperwork and whatnot and so we went like three months without health insurance um so i haven't had my migraine med my shot that i take monthly in like since october October 1st-ish, 
And so the migraines are, are back full force. So we're waiting on that prior off as well. Oh, fingers crossed. Um, So yeah, it's, it's, I thought Saturday being Chinese New Year, I always look at that as like, if the New Year isn't going well, Chinese New Year or Lunar New Year is sort of one of those, okay, we're restarting the year. Okay, so what's the next opportunity to restart this damn year? Um, cause I, I'm just not having it. Um, Saturday, a dear friend of mine that I've known probably about 10 plus years died unexpectedly. I woke up to a message while I was in my class um, about that. I don't have any other information other than her husband is like, she passed this morning. It reinforces just adds to the pile about how I feel for real I say that I've tried really hard this is the first year that I can honestly say that I was looking like I was excited I was like excited about stitching I've actually looked at more patterns and I was like how do I fit in more Valentine's Day stitching more you know like all of that which is so different for me and now I'm just I'm back in that point where I'm like done um I have an A in my one class, um, and I'm really, I'm enjoying it. I, I don't know that I'm getting, I'm getting practice, which is good. And then my Sunday night class, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. He's like between the two teachers that are teaching it now, um, I'm getting a lot of feedback like, okay, no, we really need to hone in on this kind of thing, um, which is what I want. My Tuesday night class um, is really stressing me out. I, I'm not enjoying it. I actually hate this class. I, I never thought I, I, like, I can count on one hand the numbers of classes out of all of my degrees that I can honestly say I hated. Um, Right now, I'm really hating this class. And I don't know how much of it is I hate this class. Like, I actually hate this class. Or how much of it is I'm just not in the emotional space that I need to be in to be doing it. And honestly, like, I keep saying I should just drop it. Like, we're two weeks in. It's a 10-week class, I think, six weeks, 10 weeks. Um, it's prepping for the educational certification program test for interpreters. I have zero desire to be an educational interpreter. Zero. I mean, zero. If I could have negative numbers about the desire to be an educational interpreter, I would have negative numbers. I, I really, truly, that is not where my heart lies. And it, I feel like if that's not where your heart lies, that is not an area to force it. Kids just, our, our kids deserve better. And our kids who are deaf and hard of hearing, who rely on the accessibility of language and ASL, to learn, they need better than somebody who's half-hearted there. So, but I wanted the more hands up. I wanted the practice. I wanted the, that. Um, and I had planned to take the, the EIPA just because that test offers you a boatload of feedback about not only where are your strengths and weaknesses, but it also offers several suggestions on how to improve those. I then wanted to take that information to practice and strengthen even more for the BEI. And the BEI is the test that I want to focus on passing. Um, you have to do you have to do the BEI before you can sit for the BEI two or three. Um, I don't know that you have to sit for the BEI-2, which is mental health and health in general, um, before you can take the BEI-3, which is legal. So, but you have, like, BEI-1 lets me do, like, business meetings, 
community events, like low risk sort of things, VRS calls, which I don't want to do, um, those types of things. So it just, I don't know what I'm going to do about this class. Um, I don't want it to affect my GPA in a negative way, but like an example was she gave us, we had to do a storybook. We have to tell this story. She gave us a script and we had to write a storybook. Never once in any of the directions that she gave in the class or the few that she wrote down about it, did she say that our story book had to include color. So I did mine in pencil because that's where I'm comfortable and I'm not an artist and I don't like, like coloring books and stuff don't relax me. Um, now the few examples that she showed in class, okay. They had color, but they also had like moving parts and flip outs and everything. And she told us that wasn't needed. So how would I know the color of the project? I didn't. So I didn't, and I got marked down for it. And that kind of pisses me off. And that adds to the whole, I don't like this class. That's not fair. And I don't deal with not fair real well. Um, so yeah. We're gearing up for some trials. I did make it, well, I mailed out one of the packages today. Um, I've got a couple other things that, i got a lot of stuff that's got to go. Part of it is I don't have a box to fit the, fit two of them. So I've got to find a big, bigger box, but not too big. Cause then you're like, it's like playing Goldilocks. Will it fit? Won't it fit? I don't know. So. Um, let's see. So the girl child had, and I have been flipping back and forth this last week, cooking most of the time. The boy child has stepped up and cooked a couple things. Yesterday I made a 9 by 13 pan of spanakopera, otherwise known as spinach pie. And, um, it's gone. The boy child ate two thirds of the pan. Glad it was good. Um, this week is my schedule. Well, I've got a bunch of homework to do for Tuesday night and I've got some trial stuff that I need to prep for next, like the following week. But I generally leave this week sort of and go, uh, cause I never know how I'm going to feel like, like this just, we all know this is just a. Everybody's allowed to have a shitastic week where they just know that emotionally it's going to be one of those touch and go. Like, maybe I feel good, maybe I don't. And this is my week out of the year. So, um, yeah. Like I said, next week is, is kind of busy. And then the following week is certainly really busy. And the week like, going into March is really busy. I've got um, a couple actually a couple coming up um and then like i said we've got homework and she gives us a shit ton of homework every week if this was the case and you need to have that much homework for everybody then maybe it should be a 15 week class instead of a short class i don't know okay so the boy child is going to go back to doing the meals and the meal prepping um which is good like it's good um he ended up one of the things i've noticed in his skill set and he his skills have jumped uh big time and i really have appreciated um but when like the the protein isn't defrosted and he's got to kind of switch gears right away um that seems to be a challenge um and part of that is just because there wasn't a whole lot of other proteins in the like when he had his week, he kept a lot of his proteins defrosted because he knew we, like he was going to use them kind of like the first couple of days were in the fridge the rest of the week and then, you know, took them down. Um, he didn't, we didn't plan as well with Bella's week and stuff. So that made it difficult, but he, he pinch hit, pitch hit tonight. I was supposed to make paella. The chicken wasn't defrosted. And I can't find where the chorizo got put. 
So this is very weird. So he switched gears and used the shrimp and made polenta and broccoli. So it worked out well. It worked out well. So that said, I will also say that um, so I don't really necessarily have any haul. I have some what I call stitchy kindness. Um, I won a fabric giveaway from Bee Stitch Me Fabrics, and I love her fabrics. Um, the few that I have, um, which come to find out, I actually have more Bee Stitch Me than I thought. Um, she does a, a, an amazing job. I absolutely love it. So this is a piece of Glacier. It's a 18 by 27. So is that, I think that's a back quarter. Um, of 36 count linen and it is just yeah, my camera's crap though that that's pretty actually that's pretty good um what am i going to stitch on this one of the things i have been wanting to do for years and it's very modeled one of the things i've been wanting to do for years is to do a sampler for each one of us um, in my brain, I already have mine, I wouldn't say all of it mapped out, but I have several parts of it mapped out. Um, and this would basically be, I mean, the blue that it is, is really and truly my favorite color blue. Um, and so I'm honestly thinking like that may just be what I use this for. I had debated. The other idea is I have, I've started to collect a lot of the quirky Quakers and I was thinking I could just put all my quirky Quakers on this. But then I was like, each, not all of them would, I don't know that I want to do them all on blue. I want to, I don't know. So if you have another idea, let me know. Okay. So this last week, what I actually have a finish that I'll show you. I did not stitch on. Overall, I really didn't stitch on a whole lot. Did I get a lot of stitches in? Yes. Did I stitch on a whole lot? No. So the first up is my peppermint purple blackwork cell from 2021. We don't judge around here about how long it takes you to do a cell. That's between you. And your Lord and Savior, or whoever you decide to worship. Okay, so I got last week, you remember, I got these two in. My goal was actually is at a minimum, I had this row done and this one done when I started the year. So my goal was to do. A block a week, which is how the cell was originally slated. And I thought, that's great. Then by the end of the year, I'll have a fully finish. I'll have a finish. Will it be fully finished? Who knows? It's me. Who knows? Could be, could be not. We don't know. Um, but at least I would have it off my list. So last week I actually got two in. And this week I got two in. I know. They're really pretty. And I just, in my bag, I jumped, dumped in several shades of blue DMC. There's nothing, like, one of them, I don't even know that the number's still on it. But whatever. So, I, like, I literally, I just grab it out of the bag. So, um, this is what it will look like, except for it will be all in shades of blue. So my goal next week is to at least get the square here done. Now, in a perfect world, I'll get at least, you know, maybe the two done, and that would be great. I mean, hey, if I can get it done in July, that's bloody fantastic. And it gets to go in my wiener dog bag. This is the, I need a big, I need to buy more of this wiener dog fabric. So that I can um, have a bigger wiener dog pack, project bag. Um, I did take my big girl to get her nails done today. She was an angel. 
Like, you would never know that she is normally a very reactive dog, even on the ride down. Um, now, we have been giving her a glucosamine supplement, and it's got something else in it. So, I don't know, maybe since she's feeling better, the other thing is I took her alone. I didn't take her with the other dogs. But I don't know. I'm a little concerned, though, that she's... That her sight is... is decreasing which given her age would be normal but okay so the next up tonight i had to go bean has been cat sitting god love her i love this for a friend of our mine um friend of ours who's they the last time they went on vacation bean sat for their cats as well um and they had um a medical emergency so far this trip has gone so wonderfully for them and I'm so excited for them so we watch their cats so when I went to pick her up tonight I got a little bit more done on Clementine Clementine is from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery from the Jingle Ball last year so 2022 the first Jingle Ball this is what Clementine the stitching will look like we, we we don't don't we don't know what Kelly's gonna do with the finishing. Uh, if somebody could, what I want somebody to do is look at me and look say, this is how I figure out how I'm gonna FFO something. Like I talked to Tammy and Tammy's like, oh yeah, usually when I stitch something, I already know as soon as I set see it how I'm gonna FFO it. And I'm like, only on a very rare occasion does that happen in my brain. I wish it happened more often, but it does not. Um, so this is, I started this on 12 by 12 on New Year's Eve. Um, she'll go with her little friend, her twin. That's what I, Coulter, Coulter and Clementine. So if you have not seen them together, how are they? Um, to have the set finish this year is my goal. And that is on my, I put them, listed them on my focus 24 and 24 for 24 finishes. So I got a little bit more of her dress in and I got her, um, the bottom of her face in. The other thing I did to make it easier when I grab her going forward, cause she's always, I, I stitched in hand. Um, oh, and I'm stitching this on 18 count mock Turtle by Wonderland Hand Dyed Fabrics. It's fan, absolutely fantastic. Um, so I, when I got home, I realized like I'm carrying this whole big bag of stuff that I don't necessarily need, but I don't have a special. I don't necessarily have um, a project bag for it. I have a bag that I have like ornament my patterns and the different things in there. So what I did when I came home is um, I had my floss ring from Cami at Leopard and Lace Boutique. How cute is that? I was originally going to put this on Rosie, but you'll see in a moment, Rosie is getting pretty darn close to being done. So I bought the floss jewelry. I love the little floss jewelry or tags where... It's specific, like I can say, okay, that's what this ring is for. Okay, so I separated the other colors of my master set for my ornaments that I have plated to get done. And this is my ring for my fox, for Clementine and Coulter. Coulter will also go on the mock turtle. Um, so then, I, and then I threw out a pair of my, my Timu scissors, which is freaking fantastic. So, yeah. And I paid less than two dollars a pair of scissors, and they work. They're good. Um, so this is my. So I now I can just grab, and I may put it in. I may put it in Ziploc to be honest with you, and keep it, and just keep like, this in the car now. So again, that's where she is. Also on this fabric will go Coulter. So. I would tell you Coulter would go here, but he, he can't because that's my donkey. I know. You can tell, can't you? Oh, really? 
Then my donkey. That's another one that's slated to be finished. I need to pick out the stitches here, but really and truly what I'll do is summit tang here, culture here. Then I'll have my donkey and I can still fit at least one more little ornament on this piece. How cool is that? Love it. But now I can just grab literally this or leave this in the car and I've got a complete pot. I've got, I guess, technically it's two little. So yay. Okay, so we got that done. Okay. I'm like looking in my book. Did I stitch on anything else? I did not. I have been writing what I, in my schedule, what I write, what I stitch and the stitch counts. And part of that is right now there is a, the fandom stitching group is doing Disney this year. We all know how I feel about Disney. Uh, so this month they're doing a full coverage and you get a point for your team for every 100 stitches that you stitch on a full coverage. So I put my starting picture in. Um, and so that's why, honestly, that's right now, that's the only reason. And then like this weekend is beat the mod in whip warriors and I'm one of the bots. So I have to be able to turn in my stitch count. Um, but other than that, I probably wouldn't write down what I, what my stitch count was every day, but, um, can we just admire Rosie? Wow. Okay, so when I stitch on her, I stitch in hand, and so I, and I'm old, so, or I'm older. I'm over 50. I count, I qualify for AARP. Technically, anybody does now. There was a lawsuit about age discrimination, so anybody can be a member of AARP, but whatever. Okay, so. We are just over 80, we're 88.22 percent done. I'm going to sit on her a little bit more tonight. Probably not. It's 11 o'clock. It's after 11 p.m. Um, so I probably won't get any more stitches in her tonight, but like today, in between everything, I got 827 stitches in her today alone. Um, so I was short, percentage-wise, my goal is 5% every week. I was a little short of that last week. Um, I did manage to get part of that caught up this week. So hopefully, or part of this caught up last week. Right now, I should be at 90%. It's okay. Um, but again, can we just... She's so good. Oh my God. She's so good. I still can't believe that I'm doing this. <laughs> that I haven't thrown it. Now, I will say it's taking me a little bit longer because if you recall, I had made some mistakes um, in this area over here. And so I'm having to adjust as I, as I stitch. Um, now that said, I don't think you can tell. So I, I think we're good there. So, okay. I, I have a finish and I washed it. Otherwise it would, would have been FFO'd, but I had to wash it because there was something on it. I don't know. Whatever. What am I talking about? I'm talking about my. Lunar New Year sheet from Bed Creek. Look, I even put the little dingly bell on him. The one thing I will say that I did that the pattern didn't have, but it bothered me, so I had to. I added in the little strings for the lanterns to hang off the sign. Otherwise, they were just like floating in the air. And I'm like, so that is why. 
Um, so I will get this FFO'd. Um, and ironically, I finished it on Saturday, which was Lunar New Year. So that is very exciting. That is all of my stitching. Um, that is all of my haul. That is all of my FFO. Next week, really and truly, um, the only thing that, the only, I'm going to work on Rosie and, um, I am going to start, I call him Santa. I just, I call it Santa, plain and simple. Um, it's called Song of Christmas from Lavender and Lace. But my plan is to start Santa on Wednesday. Um, so that will probably be the only day that I likely won't stitch on Rosie. Um, I know I'm missing a couple flosses, but that's okay. Um, I'll be able to, you know, when you're starting, like, I'll, I'll work around that. So I am going to stitch Santa on this beautiful linen from the the primitive hair. Yes. Right? It's called Snowfall. Yes, it's the primitive hair. Um, so I'm gonna and, and this was a gift from Janet. Thank you so much. I cannot wait to stitch. So I have never stitched on a printed fabric like this, so I'm a little nervous. So my question is, if somebody could throw me an answer before Wednesday. I normally, well, I start, it depends on where I'm, what I'm stitching, honestly. Normally I would, on something like that, so oftentimes, especially on a fuller, full coverage piece, I would start upper right hand corner. My stitch, so the pattern calls for... 32 count. My fabric is 30 count. So I know I can't just measure. Well, I mean, I guess I could do math and measure, but we all know Kelly is not going to. Like, I suck at that. So I think what I'm going to do is find the center of the fabric and start at the bottom. Because if I'm framing him, which he is going to get framed. I'm going to, I will likely have him professionally framed, actually. I don't mind if the snowflakes up here, I don't, oh, that's going out. That's probably not going to help them. Oh, I guess so. Okay. So I'm not going to mind if he doesn't, if the tree and stuff, I don't mind that it's going to go up into the snowflakes. We all know it's going to. I don't mind though if there's a bigger border at the top of these snowflakes. So I guess I answered my own question. I'll be starting in the middle at the bottom. Um, it says not to, it says I'm a printed linen, please wash me kindly in cold water. I might fade a bit. I'm not worried about it fading a little bit. Um, that works fine with me. But I might iron it a touch before. That. The other part of that is I really want to find a really nice project bag um, to store this in. And then I also want to find one for my um, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree Noel mashup. Oh, thank you. Thank you for thinking of me. Um, 
that is on my agenda to get started this week. Um, and that's been planned since, well, really kind of the end of last year. Um, that is one of my planned starts for the year. Um, so yeah, that'll be good. Um, I don't know. Other than that, I kind of want to start something beachy. But what I may do first, and I do have a couple on my agenda that are beach themed starts for the year. Um, but what I may do, because one of my focuses in 24 is to work on summertime. Um, because what I'm thinking is. Um, Yes. So then what I think is once summertime is done, and we're pretty far on it. Um, once this is done, then I'll put my beach, the, the next beach stitch in my beach bag um, for my dear friend Stephanie. Um, I'm going to go from there. So... Yeah, am I behind on Whipco? Yep. Yep. But mine are yearly goals. And I'm not going to freak out about it at this point. I would rather get Rosie done and get Rosie out of... I don't want to say out of the way because I absolutely do love working on her. And I'm going to be sad when she's done. But um, I, I would like to be able to gift her sooner than later. I mean, she's just over a year old. Clearly, it's not going to be done by this, by Valentine's Day. I am still hopeful that by the end of the month. Um, the sheep was finished number six of the year. So six out of 24. I'm a quarter of the way done with my goal of 24 finishes. The sheep, though, however, was not one I planned to finish. I keep telling myself that's okay. It's okay. Um, life will go on. So, yeah, I, it really and truly. Um, if you have any great recipes for the boy child to try, that would be good. Ones that aren't complicated. Um, I am considering doing a challenge called 75 Soft. I don't know that I can handle 75 hard at this point. But 75 Soft, what you do is every day you commit for 75 days. It could be longer because of the rules. So the rules are for 75 days, every day you need to do one workout that's 45 minutes long except for one day a week you're allowed an active recovery day um you have to you pick your diet plan however whatever works for you so for me i really want to focus in on being gluten-free um that's the big one for me. Lower FODMAP, low FODMAP. Um, that one's a little hard because I love garlic. And I like cooking with garlic. But there are ways to work around that one. Um, for me also, it'd be like not, like really watching like desserts and sweets and things like that. Like limiting those. So basically kind of a diabetic diet, which is kind of what I should be doing, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and no fast food. That That's going to be tricky. That's going to be tricky. Um, so then you also have to read 10 pages of nonfiction a day. So it's three liters of water, one workout a day, follow a diet and the reading and that, and so you do that for 75 days. 
the pro but if you like let's say one day you don't get your workout in and it's not your active recovery day let's say you you already took your active recovery day you have to start back over at number one day number one day zero where the next day would be day number one but seriously considering the water I'm, i've been pretty good about even now, I'd have to get more consistent about my workouts and that's just, you know, going over and biking. Um, having been so sick and, and that would do me a lot of good anyways. Um, fast food can be tricky. Like today with taking Lizzie to, to get her nails and done, we stopped and grabbed um, McDonald's on the way home. I read, but it's not always nonfiction, but oftentimes it is. So like that, like the reading part. So if you did 75 hard, it's two 45 minute workouts a day. And one of them has to be outside. Doesn't matter if it's raining, doesn't matter if it's snowy, doesn't matter. Has to be outside. It is Michigan in the winter still. No. I'm a sissy. You have to read 10 pages of self-help books and you have to drink a gallon of water and you, oh, that's the other thing on 75 soft, you have to take a progress picture when you start and finish and whenever you remember to in between, but on 75 hard, you have to do a progress picture every day. Um, and then you have to drink a gallon of water. And I think that's all of the rules. So, I, I, I can't mentally commit to 75 hard yet. Is that a goal? Sure. But let's start off with 75 south. 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 We're going to do 75 south. We're going to do 75 south. Um, so I'm thinking maybe starting in on March 1st. Um. That's all I have for you. And I, most of this has been rambling. So I'm going to let you go because I'm going to go to bed. So remember, you are, you are beautiful. You are cherished. You are wanted. You are needed. You are amazing. You are funny. You are loved. And you matter. That's important. That's important. You matter. You are important. With that, I'm going to let you guys go. And just remember, I love you. And if you need me, reach out to me at His Princess Kelly on Instagram or wherever else you can find me. We'll talk then. Bye, guys.